Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Stoppage Time. It is Thursday, December the 12th. Uh, we're right in the middle, of, we're recording this right in the middle of some uh, uh, Europa League games on match day six. So if you see us uh, turning away from the camera, it's because we're looking at scores that we have action on <laughs> uh, for ourselves and our clients. Um, I've got with me Nick Borman of Sports Memo and uh, Pauli Lagoretz of uh, um, wagertalk.com. Uh, we are going to cover three EPL games for this weekend. Uh, that is the weekend of December 14th and 15th. Um, but uh, if you're watching this video, check uh, our YouTube videos on our channel and subscribe. We also have uh, one on El Clasico, which uh, obviously is the one of the biggest, uh, if not the biggest game that gets played every year. Uh, in La Liga, it gets played twice, um, Barcelona and Real Madrid. We're going to uh, go in depth on that one in another video coming up shortly. All right, guys, how you doing? Uh, we're going to go to uh, Pauli first. Uh, it's good, good. It's finally uh, cold here in Greece, so you guys don't have to be jealous anymore <laughs> of our great weather. So, yeah, it's a bit cold now and uh, it's nice. Excellent. All right. Uh, speaking of cold, Nick, what's the weather like there? Uh, cold. <laughs> you nailed it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's 30, 30 degrees right now, which isn't terrible, but um, going skiing uh, in, in two weeks. So looking forward to, uh, to getting on the slopes, uh, which I suck at skiing. I've only really started the last three years. So I'm like the big guy on the slopes <laughs> doing the pizza all the way down. Yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, 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 I've never gone skiing. But uh, um, about, I'd say six, seven years ago, north of Toronto, Collingwood, it's a huge ski resort uh, area, uh, Collingwood, Ontario. Um, I had some friends here and I had a couple of my buddies who were here from uh, Costa Rica and Panama. And, and uh, they wanted to come up and ski and snowboard. So I had never gone, so I booked um, a chalet for that weekend, uh, they came up. And I'm like, I'm going to try snowboarding for once, right? So I try it. Uh, I kept falling. Um, and then I finally made it down this hill. And I thought, wow, this is fantastic. I didn't fall over once. And my buddy says to me, are you ready to try the real hill now? And I didn't know it was the medium size, like the bunny hill or whatever the hell they call it or whatever. So I do this, you know, we get on the lift, takes me to the top. And no word of a lie, I fell on my face about seven, eight times in a matter of like 30 meters. And as I'm on the ground trying to get up, I watch this little six-year-old kid come whizzing by me on this snowboard. And he is like, he's turning left, he's turning right. And I just literally said, F this. I, and I literally slid down to the bottom <laughs> of the hill. I waited for my friends to come down and said, I'm gonna be in the chalet drinking scotch watching TV, I'll see you guys there. And uh, and that was it. Uh, if I had tried again, I would have broken a bone in my body. I'm much older than you guys, and I'm much more fragile than you guys. So uh, anyways, okay guys, three games, uh, EPL, uh, we're on the heels of match day six in Champions League and match day six in Europa League. Um, so uh, some of these teams were in action. Um, I believe four of the six teams that we're gonna cover were in action. Uh, starting with this first one, uh, Arsenal, who are in action right now as we speak. Uh, Arsenal play uh, at home against um, Man uh, Manchester City. Um, Arsenal are plus 450 at home. Uh, Manchester City are plus two, or sorry, minus 225. And the draw is uh, plus 425. Uh, Arsenal finally got a win. Uh, it took them a while. Uh, they got a win on Monday, I believe, uh, against West Ham. Uh, down one, uh, one nil. They scored three to, uh, to get the win there. Uh, Manchester City, um, I'm not really sure. They, they come off losing the Manchester Derby at home at the Etihad against uh, against United. Um, and, you know, don't know what to say about them. They're now, uh, it looks like, uh, 14 points back of uh, Liverpool. Um, I think their title hopes are pretty much done. Uh, I think it's champion to win Champions League or nothing. Um, 
Um, but obviously they're the favorites here, and they're deservedly so. Uh, they'll be missing a few uh, a few players. It looks like um, at last report, um, Silva's out, Stones is out, Aguero is out. Um, but on the Arsenal side, uh, it looks like uh, quite a few right now. Pepe, it looks like is out. The Shaka's out. The uh, Turney's out. Um, holding Sabalos and Bellerin. Uh, we'll see if that changes when the team reports come out on Friday. But I'm going to go to Nick first here. Uh, your thoughts on this game? Uh, I think standing ovation for Arsenal is due. First win in 10 games, like you already said. Uh, so I'm sure they're very happy there. It's been a bad run for the for the Gunners, for sure. Um, and City, you know, I don't... They lost to United. They're, they're just so good to be losing the games that they're losing right now and not getting results. I mean... They have what draws against uh, a Newcastle as well in, the, in their in their last few games. That loss, um, the, the loss against United, and of course loss against Liverpool, which is not necessarily a bad loss. But they just they are are struggling this year. It's just that back line's not quite holding up, and of course injuries, you know, always play a factor here. Um, I think you nailed on the head. I think I don't see any way they're catching Liverpool. Um, I think it's Champions League or bust, which they always seem to screw up every year too at this point in the competition. So who knows what's going to happen with them. Um, the side here, listen, you look at the, uh, you look at like the current form for both teams. I can't, I can't make a play on the side personally. I mean, that extra quarter of a goal, if it's minus one, you're probably looking at city. If it's one and a half, you're probably arguing arsenals the play, but I think the line set pretty well there. Historically, the last five meetings the city has won by two or more goals, but just doesn't seem like the same city team this year. Um, the over might be my lean here just because both teams do have uh, somewhat leaky defenses this year. City, of course, has the firepower to score three, four, or more um, themselves. But I'm not huge in this one, guys. I don't know how you feel about the line the way it is right now, but I'm struggling there at the side. And, and if anything, I would probably just be forcing a little bit uh, of a lean on the over. But uh, not what you guys are thinking. Paulie? Yeah, I agree with Nick on this one. Uh, the side is really – I can't touch it because – uh, it's it's really weird because neither team is in good shape right now. Uh, Arsenal came back from um, uh, one goal down to beat West Ham and uh, come back to winning ways. Um, Manchester City, yeah, I agree. His, their, their title hopes are pretty much done. Um, if anything, I would be more worried about Leicester making a push and not Manchester City. Um, Looking at how both teams have performed lately, um, there have been goals from both sides in almost uh, 10 of Arsenal's uh, last matches in all competitions. Same goes for uh, Manchester City. So I expect goals from both sides here, uh, at least three of them. So yeah, I'm going to go with the over, uh, what is it, three and a yeah. half? Yeah, that's, that's going to be my pick on this one. Yeah, as far as the title hopes goes, I think it it is only it's Leicester or nothing. Um, uh, since that um, since that two one Liverpool win uh, at home against Leicester on the fifth of May, they've reeled off uh, eight straight league wins, nine wins overall if you if you include the EFL Cup. Um, yeah, they're they're just a, a, a team that's that's playing extremely well right now. All right, um, we talked about that Manchester Derby and uh, the United win. Um, they're at home. Um, they're at home this weekend, uh, I believe. And uh, yes, they are. They're the early game on, on Sunday morning. Uh, Man United Everton. They're minus 134 at home. Uh, Everton is plus 350. The draw here is plus 270. Uh, Everton, it took them a while. You know, I, I kept checking pretty much every single day, BBC waiting for the announcement that uh, Marco Silva was fired. And uh, I was pretty sure after that last loss that uh, he was going to go and uh, it didn't take him uh, that much longer for them to, uh, um, to, uh, to, to sack him. But um, they get the win against Chelsea. And, uh, um, you know, the, the, the following week after that, uh, that loss to Liverpool, um, can they can they make it two in a row? I'm gonna to go to uh, Nick. I'm gonna to go to you first on this one. Yeah, uh, I mean, seemingly it, it came out of nowhere um, for 
for Everton to get that win. I mean, they had lost three straight games. Um, of course, two of the games were Liverton and Leicester, but um, they had lost three straight games. They haven't been playing well all year. They have just 19 goals right now on the year. Um, and that's just not going to get up, get the job done in this league to keep them in the top half. They normally are. I mean, we know the team. They normally are a good team, a solid team, really strong at home. Um, they have one of the best goalkeepers around, um, but he's, you know, just nothing's really working for them this year. So, uh, you know, was that last that last uh, week a fluke against Chelsea where they where they came out and won, or is that a sign of things to come? I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I'm more looking, you know, United, they seem to be impressing a little bit more. I mean, we know they've had their struggles um, over the last two seasons. Um, but honestly, they, they are looking probably better now than they have in quite some time. Um, they beat City and Tottenham back-to-back games. I mean, that's impressive in, in its own right. Um, they're scoring goals. Um, the additions of Maguire and Juan Bissaka on the back line, which has been their, you know, their trouble the last two seasons, seems to finally be paying off um, as they are doing a decent job uh, of holding teams. Um, and, you know, all of this going on without Pogba on the field is, is even more impressive. Uh, Rashford has been playing awesome. Um, and then, you know, Marshall and Lingard uh, are forming a nice combination uh, up front for them. So, you know, I, I, for me, I, I think it's anything but a United win here would, would surprise me. I don't think they're going to come out here and, you know, win 3-0, 4-0 by any means, but 2-1, uh, maybe a 3-1. Uh, right now, I think uh, you mentioned the lines that are on minus 130, minus 135, or you take the three-quarter quarter goal line. Um, but I like United at home. I think they're playing well. I think the confidence is coming back to these guys. Um, and Everton getting back on the road. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be confident with them as I would would be at home. So I like. United yeah, you know, uh, before I send this to Paulie on this one, it, it's one of those things, and it's it's we see it each and every year in the EPL. A uh, manager gets fired. Someone comes in. There's a short term uptick. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I have to believe that the uptick for Everton is going to last a little longer. Like this was a team um, that spent money in the offseason. This is a team that um, was supposed to be challenging for, they thought, for a, if, uh, well, not only a top six spot, but possibly a top four spot and a Champions League spot. Um, are they going to get there this year? No, not with uh, uh, the way Chelsea is playing right now. You know Tottenham is going to play much better. Uh, obviously, the, the surprise element of the standings this year is Leicester City, and they're going to take a Champions League spot away from uh, one of those teams. So there's going to be, um, other than Liverpool, uh, Man City, and Leicester, um, there's going to be a great race for that fourth spot, I think, um, in, in, in Champions League this year. And uh, as far as the Everton win over Chelsea, um, yeah, you know, I understand Chelsea was struggling um, and teams the weekend before a Champions League um, midweek thing, a lot of these teams tend to struggle. Um, we see it each and uh, every week, the weekend before, whether it's guys are arrested or where the, the focus isn't really there. You know, Chelsea had a big game, obviously, against Lille. Um, at you know at uh, Stamford Bridge, um, which it, they ended up winning two one, and qualifying for the round of sixteen. But before that, you know they, uh, you know they struggled in in losing to West Ham at home, um, struggled at Valencia in Champions League, and obviously lost uh, to Man City the week before that. So uh, it, it might have been a combination of the two that contributed to Everton winning that game. But um, you know. Uh, I'm not completely sure on this game just yet. Um, um, I think that, you know, there there still might be that thing that um, United sort of um, drop off after that um, big win over City. Uh, maybe a bit of a hangover there and maybe Everton does string a couple wins in a row. I'm not really sure. I'm not putting any money on it yet, but I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll make a decision before the weekend rolls around. Paulie. Um, yeah, I think they'll fall off after that win against Manchester City because um, actually I'd like to see how they do today at the Europa League. They're playing in about an hour. Um, I just saw their lineup. Uh, they do have some first team players up there in a um, not so crucial match. They have already qualified. It's only the top spot that is up for grabs. Um, I. I'm very disappointed about Everton this season because I had Everton and West Ham uh, to be more, I, I thought they would be more competitive, 
But uh, teams like Sheffield United and Wolves and Leicester are doing a really good job. So it's a really weird Premier League season, at least uh, in my eyes and how I would expect it would go. Uh, now Everton, they suck their manager and um, it's always natural for, for teams who do that to perform well. Um, the interim manager who took over was uh, an ex-Everton uh, player, so he also gave some, you know, a, a morale boost to the players. They played for him and for themselves, of course. Um, looking at how both teams have performed lately, and I use that uh, expression a lot, but um, these two have done pretty similar things lately, which is uh, high-scoring matches, not keeping clean seats, and scoring... Uh, United actually are scoring. <laughs> Everton have uh, um, troubles in in putting goals together, um, and this I think this is their problem. Since Lukaku left from Everton, uh, they haven't been able to find a consistent scorer, an offensive threat that uh, uh, would uh, you know um, find uh, the the correct chemistry with the rest of the team because they do have a very nice playmaker in uh, Sigurdsson. They have uh, decent players in the wings. They have a solid defense. So I think the only problem they have is up front. So um, looking at this match, um, I'm not gonna. I'm not really sure right now what to pick uh, because I want to see how Manchester United uh, do today at their Europa League match. But this looks, at the first glance, like an over to me. And uh, over, I, th I think we'll see at least three goals here. So the, li the line right now is at two and a half. So I'll gladly take the over two and a half. Okay. Um, that's Polly Lagarets of wagertalk.com. We have Nick Borman of Sports Memo. Guys, um, from today till next Thursday, you can use this code uh, 15EPL. Uh, that'll get you $15 off any one of our three um, daily soccer packages. Uh, obviously, uh, it'll be a busy weekend uh, uh, of football um, and uh, getting into next week with, with more domestic uh, uh, league games and, and such. So um, if you head over to Sports Memo or to wagertalk.com, select uh, whichever capper you want or any other packages, you can use that code over and over again to get 15 off uh, one of the regular $25 um, packages uh, on the site. All right, we're going to head to the, the final game of uh, the EPL weekend for us to cover, and that's the aforementioned uh, Blues of Chelsea. Uh, they're at home against a, a Bournemouth uh, side that uh, just can't seem to win now. Uh, uh, five in a row they've lost. Uh, you know, we talked about uh, Chelsea losing their last one against Everton. Uh, they're minus 400 here. Uh, Bournemouth is not uh, plus 900. The draw is uh, plus 500. And the, the total here, I'm uh, looking for the total here. Uh, Looks to be uh, three, three and a half. I'm not, um, yeah, three, three and a half. Um, what, you know, one thing for me when I was looking at this game is the fact that Chelsea lost uh, last week, the fact that they've now qualified for Champions League and they don't have to really worry about um, that competition now. And it's more about uh, uh, getting um, uh, some points is um, this is a, a very good game for them to bounce back. And the fact that Bournemouth have numerous injuries to this team, numerous injuries on their back line, uh, it just, to me, it just screams like a game that's going to have a lot of goals in it and uh, be one-sided. Uh, uh, I'll go to you first, Nick. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we already talked about, you know, the loss for Chelsea be a combination of the look ahead in the Champions League and the managerial change for Everton. Um, you know, but they, before that, they, uh, you know, they had a few bad games too. They had that home loss um, against the Hammers. Um, and they haven't been playing as good. They had that run kind of about a month ago for a good six-week stretch where they looked tough to beat. Um, but then they kind of stumbled a little bit lately. Um, and, you know, like I said, uh, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They weren't really maybe fully invested in that Everton match. Um and, you know, going forward, this does look like a good bounce back spot for him. I agree. And, and, and I, I'd actually be surprised 
the line's minus 1.75 right now uh, on the Asian handicap. I, I'd be surprised if this didn't move to a full two goals um, closer to uh, to kickoff. Um, and actually, if it does do that right now, you know this this kind of line, you know, two goal win for for Chelsea if, if they win. Uh, so well, when they win, more likely um, seems likely. Um, and I hate to 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 back the team at one and a three quarters when you're only going to get you know kind of half win on your wager. But at two full goals, I'm actually going to look at at Bournemouth here. Um, you're right; they've been struggling. They lost five straight. Um, with Josh King, uh, you said you mentioned injuries. Josh King's out right now. They just don't seem to be able to uh, to, to to put as much up front and get get anything going without him in the lineup. Um, it is worth noting that four of the losses have been just by one goal. Um, they did lose zero uh, three against Liverpool in their last game. We even have a chance to score in that match. Um, and you know, over the years, with the last few seasons with uh, matches against Chelsea, they've played them pretty tight. Um, so I actually, I'm going to wait. I don't like anything right now. I do agree with you on the over probably being the case here. I think I'd be surprised if, you know, Bournemouth doesn't score, um, in this match, even though they, they don't, um, they haven't been as getting many opportunities without King in the lineup. They are still getting one in usually each game. Um, and I do like the, the over here as well, but I'm going to wait on the side. I think we're going to see twos pop out. And at that point, um, I, I'm actually going to look to Bournemouth because I think a three goal wins probably, uh, a little more unlikely for Chelsea than than a one goal win or even possibly I doubt it's going to happen, but a draw from Bournemouth. But that's what I'm thinking here in this one. Yeah, no, I, I have to believe that, um, and it, it, there, it, it's a it's a stretch, but that Bournemouth is going to get a goal here. Uh, they're going to get on the score sheet. Um, there's only one uh, there's only one clean sheet in. Chelsea's past ten, and that was at Crist- uh, against Crystal Palace at home, and. Um, you know, uh, it's it's not saying much, uh, unfortunately, because Crystal Palace isn't a team that scores um, very often or a lot of goals. So, um, so, so yeah, uh, you know, I mean, if this total was at three, I would be completely all over it right off the bat. It's uh, three, three and a half right now. And I think it's going to stay at that three, three and a half line just because of the fact that um, it's a Bournemouth side. They probably, they, you know, I think when you look at this line, they probably figure it's, it's something along the lines of a 3-1 score line, which is why you see a, a line like that on Chelsea and why you see a total uh, where it is. But I'd be perfectly happy with a, um, uh, a Chelsea 3-2 win here. It gets you guys your win. Uh, well, we don't know what Polly has yet, but it gets me my totals win. Polly, what are your thoughts here? Um, Chelsea do not have a lot of depth uh, this season, so... They use um, uh, pretty similar lineups in their three competitions that they play. Two, actually, now the Champions League and the Premier League. Uh, they used a lot of starters in their midweek match against Lille. So I'm a bit uh, worried about uh, the, um, the fatigue of the players because there are certain players, for example, Abraham and Pulisic and William and some other players at the back that they play... Um, they have played a lot of matches and um, looking at how Chelsea have performed at home they only won by two or more goals on two occasions they beat Brighton by 2-0 and and Crystal Palace by 2-0 came by a one goal margin so um, looking at um, how Bournemouth uh, uh, do on the road yes they, they're actually coming into this match with uh, five consecutive uh, losses and have won just once in the last maybe three months almost but they they have a fighting spirit they never give up um, um, in that five match losing streak they're on their own they played against uh, Tottenham on the road they were down by three nil but they did manage to score twice in the final 20 minutes of the match they didn't ma- they didn't take anything from that match but it goes to show that they never give up. Um, so, looking at how they fared on the road this season, uh, they have only lost uh, two matches by two goals or more. Actually, that's one match. So, yeah, I don't think that Chelsea will cover the spread easily on this match. Um, but as you said, uh, Carmine, um, they are decimated by injuries. They have a lot of quality players that are out. They haven't uh, some of them haven't even played a single minute this season. 
Um, the over also worries me because uh, I don't know teams that are on such losing streaks. They tend to, you know, uh, uh, come out of nowhere and beat some really big team. Yeah. So I don't know. This is. Um, I'm I'm not gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Bournemouth on this one, especially Nick said that uh, if the line goes at uh, plus two goals, yeah, I definitely go there. Yeah, yeah, and I I, but, I agree uh, with uh, uh, Nick's analogy in, in the sense of um, you know when you see that line at, at minus uh, minus one and a half minus two, and you're thinking of taking the um, you know the favorite there. Um, obviously, if they win by two, uh, it's it's a half win, half push for us. As um, you know, for those watching to to, to make you understand, uh, if you're betting it, obviously you're only winning half of your wager. Uh, uh, for us, I like both sports memo and um, at wager talk. We have to like regrade our wagers and uh, to reflect it. Um, I think I do that like once a month where I literally have to go through my last 30 days of, of soccer to, to make sure that everything is graded properly um, as half wins and half pushes and uh, or half losses and such. So uh, if you're getting a full two goals, uh, yeah, I definitely uh, look to take the dog. I think we see it a lot in, uh, um, in La Liga, uh, which we'll talk about in the next video. And you see a lot of one and a half twos in there. Um, and if you wait until game day, those one and a half twos become plus twos. Uh, and it's a great spot to take because a lot of these teams are focused on Champions League or uh, upcoming, ma upcoming matches that um, they already call off the dogs. And um, it's a great spot to take the two goals. All right, guys. Uh, Thanks for your feedback on these three games. Uh, best of luck on this weekend. And we have, again, a, a very big match coming up. Um, uh, El Clasico, Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, Wednesday, uh, December the 18th. And we're going to discuss that shortly in another video. Um, head over to wagertalk.com or Sports Memo. Use code uh, 15 EPL and get uh, uh, any one of the guys uh, daily soccer packages um, uh, from Thursday to uh, next Thursday uh, and you get $15 off the regular price. Uh, guys, thanks for watching and uh, good luck with your wagers.